You get excited. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do some 3D printing here. We got Steve, we got Gavin, and we've got a 3D model to print. So uh, guys, can you help me understand how do I get this file ready for a 3D printer in terms of like just prepping this file and saving it pro appropriately? All right, so step one, we get our micro SD card. And we put Ooh. it in the- Show us that micro SD, right Steve. Ah. And then we're gonna put <laughs> it in the adapter. Okay. And then we're, he's gonna probably get in on the USB port. Nice. These do also have like a mini, U, a micro USB port on them though, right? Yeah. Okay. Come on now. I figured that I think the other way. No, it's right the first time. There we go. So then once we get that in, once you have your model drawn, we're gonna go to environments up top. Yep. And we're gonna go 3D print. Yeah. And we're gonna go to print options. We're going to get units, put a millimeter, and then for resolution, you're gonna set like high. That, okay, but you can't, like, if we wanted to do a sloppy rough print and we didn't really care about, Pro, yeah, you could yeah. do a medium or yeah. whatever. Okay, so we're just doing the settings of how high quality we want the print to come out. Yeah, and make sure the millimeter. But, Millimeters are yeah, important. Yeah. And you click OK. Yeah. And then you click STL. Okay. Go to the, your, uh, your SD card, your micro SD. We need to just save our file as an STL file on here, I presume. I think it should be... Uh, isn't that it? Okay, so that saves it as an STL file, which is the file type 3D printers communicate with. I noticed my file looks very, very small and sideways. Is that something I worry about right now? Not right now. Not right now, that's for another video? Yep. Okay, all right, so we've saved our file. Steve's gonna pull out that micro SD card and we're gonna be good to go. Hopefully. All right, we are back for round two of our 3D printing tutorial. So now that we have our file saved, we're gonna pull it up in our slicing software. Ooh, thank you for the point, Steve. <laughs> all right, Prusa Slicer is what our Ender 3 printers run on. And Gavin's gonna explain all the intricacies of this amazing software. Uh, <laughs> okay, step one, ignore <laughs> that. Uh, so then to add, so start out, you can go to your printer right here. Where's that? Right, right. You oh, over here on the here. right, okay. And so all the printers should be in there, but if not, you can hit add, remove printers, add printers, just trying to, wants you to update it. You know. And then you can, and then you can go to other vendors and then any new printers we end up getting, you can add. Here. Oh, okay. So yeah, if you yeah, buy something yeah. that runs on yeah, this yeah. one, you or can just like select three, it and yeah. search for it. Okay. So then since we're printing on the Ender 3, just normal, so let's create, create out the Ender 3. It will do everything. And if we were it. using that, our bigger one, our Neo Max, for instance, yeah. that would be this, that one just below yeah. it, right? The V2, yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, we're yeah. using the other one, so. All right. So then to start out, you click this little cube with plus, and then... You'll go down to our USB drive where we have our STL saved. We'll click that and click open. All right, so then once we get our, our file in, we can click, uh, click face. And then since this is what we want to print on to be the bottom, you can just click it and it'll auto. But oh, it'll reorient yeah. it if you just oh. click on it. Yeah, and then if you but that it, it only reoriented because you first selected this yeah, to like yeah, rotate. Yeah, face. Okay. And then if you just want it to arrange like we're in the center, you just click it. And if it wasn't center, it would center. So you. Yeah. Okay, I understand. All right. And that's just like if you want to move. It. So, that's so like here's our Cartesian it. coordinates. Yeah. If you want to move it around. You can scale it up or down, make it bigger or smaller, and rotate it, and then you can cut it in half if you want. Yeah, and this is something for us to keep in mind, like it, for design efficiency, like with our, 
with our fabrication as well. Like it would be silly to try and orient this the other way because then it's trying to print columns and then make a base on top of that in thin air, which would not go well. So then the next stuff setting is what your infill wants to be, what you want your infill to be. It's just standard, it's usually 15. And then if you want supports or not, you can add them. But since okay. we don't need them, this is pretty much all we had to do. So add supports, let's say we did, we'd say- You can, uh, you can do just on the build plate, you can do whatever for support and forces only, or you can do everywhere. Okay, and that would be in a scenario where we are trying to print something yeah, that's yeah. hanging up in the air. Yeah, and yeah. you need something to support it. Okay. And then, so after you do that, uh, you can click slice. It's down yeah. here. Yeah. It's doing the we'll slice. Cut into basically a bunch of little layers. Which you can even see as the printer's printing. How it creates the part. Cool. So then once that's all cut, you click this little export to SD card. Down here in the bottom right? Yep. Since okay. It, that, cause since it recognizes the SD card, you just click it. It will auto go to the USB drive. And then you just click save. And now we're ready to go to the printer. And then you can just hit eject. All right, exciting. So next up, we're gonna go set up our printer. Now we're already like rolling here. So, yep, right. here we are. Can fill it out, right? All right, yeah, we're gonna try and first take this spool of filament out, put in some other filament. It's gonna be exciting. All right, so step one, click the power button. I'm gonna turn on. Fancy. All right, and then you click, click the button. That's just to like bring yep. up our menu. And then it, you'll go down to temperature. Like that. You'll go down to nozzle. Like that. Since there's PLA that's in it, you just go to the temperature, which is around 215. And that's its melting point. Yeah. And you click that, and then we'll let it preheat. So as soon as you click it to that, it's going to start heating that up? Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and you can see it right there. All right, cool. Um, and then what was I going to ask? So we're heating this up so it's loot, it's like liquefies, and we can like pull it out of this extruder. Yeah and then take it out of this whole system. Uh, we're gonna then put in a new spool of filament. I guess, why do temperatures and all these settings matter so much with a 3D printer? It just depends, like, cause different filaments melt at different points. And so you don't wanna have it too cold where it jams or too hot where it jams also. Yeah. So. And with these Ender 3 printers that we have in our room, we wanna always be consistent in that we're using a PLA filament. Yeah. And there's also even like the nozzles are designed for a specific uh, diameter. And this is what diameter? 1.75, I believe. 1.75 millimeter. Okay. All right. So the temperature is going up pretty quickly. So we're going to take out that black filament and put in this really cool metallic blue. It's going to be exciting. Oh, here, go ahead, do that gesture again, Steve. That was a really good hand sweep. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Okay, so we are moments away from our temp. You can see it's starting to melt. Okay, so once okay. it's heated up, you press, there's a little lever right here. Let me see that. It goes in and out. Oh, okay. Yep. So you push it in. And then you just pull it straight out. So. Makes it pretty easy. Yeah. And then you take your old filament, wrap it up. And there is the best way to store this stuff. And make sure you put it so it doesn't get all tangled. And yeah. And the best way to store it would be to get a handy dandy plastic bag. Steve, do you want to be the official baggerizer? The baggerizer. They call me that. <laughs> oh man, this bag does not want to have this in there. Is this a big enough bag? Well, I will let you wrestle with the bag while. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Expertly bagged. Alright, so okay. now the next step is you get your filament, get it untangled. Ooh, it and changes then colors. In order to make sure you have a good, nice melting end, just take a little chop off so it's nice and smooth. You want like a flat end? Yeah, basically. Okay. And then 
put your filament in so that it's just a nice, nice swooping angle. Yep. All right, and then you're gonna press the lever, put it in. Press the lever, put it in, and then just start feeding it. Cool. You can see it feeding through that little plastic yeah. tunnel. And you hear it, hear it, feel it like resistance, and then it'll, if you keep pushing, it'll start melting. So oh, okay. Like, so like if you want. Oh to yeah. So it's it's now we can see it's extruding out the last of that black filament. Yeah, so that if we you wanted to make sure you didn't want any of that filament in the new print. Like so. Okay, there we got our yeah. That's the new stuff I see coming out. Okay, so we're good now. That's exciting, and also pretty easy. Yep. So now that Stephen can put the SD card in or the micro SD. Oh, it's over. Tiny, tiny little spot. So you put that in. And we'll click, and then it says media inserted, so it reads it. You click the button. Scroll down to print from media, click it again, and then find our file, which is right here. You click it, and then you can start printing. And so and while it is heating, we'll put some more masking tape down so it helps stick it. So this better. masking tape is really, we're just putting this on here so it's got a little bit more of like a tact, like a, a bumpy surface, more surface area for it to grip onto, right? Yeah. That way our printer does not, our print doesn't come loose from the bed mm -hmm. and end up doing, uh, you know, making things like this where it just ends up turning into a mess because the thing came off the uh, the printer and the print bed. It doesn't have anything to adhere to anymore. Yeah. Okay. And so I guess, is this thing just going to automatically... It's, it's or, yeah, it's going to start printing. But yeah. Usually you do the taping before you start the print, but I forgot, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, note to uh, viewer, put the tape down before you uh, actually say go go with the print. So then once you get your tape down, and this thing is just check, is leveling itself right yep. now, correct? Yeah, just checking. making sure it's all good. And to make sure it sticks even better, we'll put some uh, just standard glue stick on it. And this is something we would not want to put on the print bed yeah. itself. Or that would make did, a big mess. You would just have to clean it with alcohol. Yeah. yeah. And then you just put a nice bead. Whatever it's supposed to be. Okay. And then it's going to go to this temperature that it wants to be. Which is 210? <laughs> yep. Okay. Which it auto, it'll do it in the slicer too. Okay. But if you do want to change it, you can click the button, go to tune. And then you can adjust how fast it's printing, the speed, the, or the how fast it's printing, the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature. Fan what speeds, is a good bed temperature while we're at? Bed it? sixty. Okay, and that's what we're at. Yeah. Okay. And then different flows. So. All right. All right. I see the temperature is going up above two ten. Yeah. Is that a problem? Then it'll just back down. Okay. Likes to freak you out a little bit. <laughs> All right, so it's saying extruder heating. I guess it's just like yep. a waiting game for it to decide yeah, when it's, it's like. It's good. It's gonna re, re zero the Z. This printer is giving us a good lesson and to always like double check what we do before we start. So it's leveling itself a second time. That's that part of the novel. Oh boy, is this it? And the print begins. So we'll check back in when our print has completed.